Good morning, Code Simplifier tribes. Bess is here from Code Simplifier Coding School. I hope you all are having a great time. I do apologize for the big gap between my videos. I was busy with the study and assignments and those tasks pretty much took all my time and I wasn't able to record any video. But now I am back with more videos for you all and with no further talk, let's start our work. In our last video, we managed to finish off the user interface of our application. And while I was reviewing my code, I noticed that I missed a few parts. But those small parts aren't affecting our work and we will fix them once we got to them. The focus of today's video is validating client's input. By saying validation, I mean we want to check what type of information the user will be entering and our job is to check if those information are what we wanted or not. Let's check which part of the application the client needs to enter inputs and what will be triggering the validation. The answer would be the calculate button is the one which triggers the validation. Because once the client entered all the input, finally they need to calculate the cost of the shipments. So let's find the calculate button in the XAML, uh, XAML layout. So here it is. To zoom in, you just hold the control and scroll in. So once we found the calculate button, to this side, just double click on that button. And that will take us to the C, C sharp code of the application. Often we need to modify our code and to do that, it would be the best to organize our code by writing neat comments. Now I am going to write a few comments and I will be explaining what I have done and why I did it. If you noticed, I have a start and end comment for each method. And the main reason behind it is when the program gets bigger, it will be hard to manage the code. And it happened a lot to me where I deleted an extra bracket or missed something, which it took me a long time to figure out what I have done wrong or missed. So I found this commenting style is convenient to have a neat code. Let's get back to the main business. The first assumption for the name validation is that the client leaves it blank and our job is to handle that issue. The question is, how are we going to do it? Let's find out. A step one is to find the ID of the name box in the XAML layout. Then we use that ID to validate the input. The fastest way to do it is to do a quick search. Use the control F in the environment, in our XAML environment to open up the search button within the window. We just search for customer name box and that will take us to the name. So this is the ID we need, control C and go back to your XAML C hash file to do the validation. In the C hash environment, we need to check if the name section is blank or not. To do it, we need an if statement. So let me write the code, then explain what I have done. Here we wrote an if statement to check for a condition. The condition is here. We are going to check if the name section left blank or not. The string is a method that we are going to use. It has a method within it, which is check for the section to, if, to, to see if it's empty or no. And what we are going to check the customer name box. Where this customer name box came from, it came from the OWL XAML file. Then we convert it to a text. Now, if this condition is true, here we want to write a code to be executed if the name section left blank. Within our if statement, we want to write a code to be shown if this condition above is met, which in our case is the customer left name section blank. First, we need to create an error message to be shown. So we just write a comment as this error message will be created. What is the error message? We create a variable, we call it error message, then equals to new message dialog. So what the message dialog 
does it creates an error message if you get getting this red line below the message dialog that's fine because in a second we are going to import the class for it so within the parentheses we want to write down the error message that is going to be shown so error the name cannot be blank so that is the message that will going to show to the customer then the error message will be shown as a pop-up screen message so that is going to be await our error message dot show a sync then we need to set the focus focus to the name and select everything to doing that we have the customer name box from our xaml file then we have the focus within the parentheses we are going to have the focus state and a programmatic focus then below that we use the customer name box one more time dot is select all which is going to select whatever the user wrote in that section and lastly we are going to return the result of this code so go to the message dialog box hold on the control and dot on your keyboard and this window pops up this is the class that we are going to import using windows ui pops up so click on it and the error message will be gone now to test the result of our code we need to rebuild our project and check it out let's see what the outcome okay. is i just click on calculate and this is the error the name cannot be blank and we close it and here is the focus goes back to the customer name i am a big fan of try and error so now we want to check if one of those statements is missed or we just skip it what will happen to our code so go back to your code this is the main thing it has to stay here but let's comment out a wait error message to see what will happen so just comment it out save it uh, return your code again one more time click on calculate as you see nothing shows but the focus goes back to the customer so the await save the work the await is going to return this error message and will be shown as a pop-up screen message to the customer so let's comment out the focus save your work rebuild click on calculate the name cannot be blank so the message is shown nothing has been selected so just focus on here for a second i want to just uncomment the customer focus and see what will happen to the customer name box so back to the code uncomment rebuild customer name is selected if you click on calculate the error message has been shown close the focus goes back to the customer name and one thing here is the select all it won't apply here because we presume the customer left the name box empty so what the select all does i'm going to show you next when we are validating the name if the customer doesn't enter alphabetic letters as their name so we can skip that one but i will leave it as for now so let's comment out the return and see what will happen one more time click on calculate name can blank and customer name so the return as you see doesn't affect much on our uh, project for right now but i will show you next again why we need to return the error message out of here once we develop more if else statements on command the return save we run the project one more time to double check everything works fine and then we will move on so we focus on customer phone for now we just click on calculate the name cannot be blank close the focus goes back to the customer right. name. That is it for today's video. We covered the followings, how to validate a section, 
how to create an if statement, how to create an error message, and tested the different aspects of the code. In the next video, we will be checking to see if the customer's name contains letters or not. I hope you enjoyed today's video as much as I did. Lastly, if you are new here in my channel and this video was helpful to you, please do us a favor and hit the subscribe button as well as liking this video to help others to see our work. By supporting our channel, you are giving us confidence to create more educational videos and share with others. If in any part of today's video you stuck or have any questions, write your concerns in the comment section and I do my best to help you to overcome the issue. Happy coding and see you all later.